So this is a quick video to show how to connect an audio uh, from your board to a tablet. In this case, we're doing a tablet, but also works for iPhone or uh, other devices, Android as well. Um, to get good quality audio, audio for your video shoot or uh, streaming when you stream live stream. So um, right now I'm shooting from our iPhone. I'm wearing a little lapel mic cheap lapel mic. Uh, I do have a light uh, clamp set up that I am using for better lighting um, that I showed in my previous video that I'll link in here, kind of some of the equipment I use. Um, but uh, right now, which is kind of, I'm showing you kind of a lot of my main setup besides using my phone. Um, and I have the board. We're going to start with the board first. Um, on the left here, I have the board. Uh, I have a condenser mic, as you can see, just going into channel one on the board. And this same principle that I'm going to show you works with a small board setting like this, if you're going to do kind of like your own stream, video shoot, podcast, or something like that, or even if you have a, a big board set up at church. Same, same concept works. Um, so you're going to take a line out of the board for the uh, the uh iRig to audio interface. There's other audio interfaces out there that can work for you. Uh, I'm just showing iRig 2 because it's one of the cheapest options and, I know, and it works very well. Um, and so let's start with the board first. So one tip for the board is I would recommend that you come out of an aux channel. And here's the reason why. Um, some people will come out of the main channel. They'll run um, their main speakers or monitor speakers if they're you know kind of kind of going live or you know in a service out of one main and kind of just daisy chain the speakers and then have another main open and when I say main I'm talking about main output that's what it says on the board your mains that's what the in your in like a church service your big speakers would be ultimately the signal would be coming from and so what they'll do is they'll they'll do that and then they'll do their media mix or their video mix coming from that same type of mix I don't recommend that, and here's the reason why. Is when you're in a live environment, live service or something like that, you will mix differently from what you hear in that building, and you may hear some things a little different than if you pipe a signal directly to a device. Let me give you an example. Drums being an example. You may have drums lower in your mix for your auditorium your main service or something like that um, because you can if they're acoustic drums you can hear them as well the sound is bleeding out however you know that mix low will become really really low in your mix going out to your video stream because the video stream is not hearing what's in the buildings around you unless you have like audio uh, audience mics and stuff like that so the best way to do is come out of, in my opinion at least, is to come out of an aux channel, an auxiliary output channel. And basically what you're going to do, just some tips here, and I, I'm going to walk around, try to walk around to my board here, is that you're going to go in your aux channel there. Uh, you're going to go um, to every channel that you want to come out to your media mix. And you're going to go to the, and this is just a tiny board, a small board. I'm going to lift it up a little bit so you can see it just a little bit better. But you're going to go to the channels, like here's channel one here, and you're going to go to the aux channel, which is in this case the red knobs, and you'll turn up the volume and what you want to send to the output channel. And so that, that creates your mix. That creates the mix that you're going to then send out um, to your video feed. And the reason why I recommend that being separate it, besides stuff like the drums is that you can just really get finite in detail about what you're sending to the media what you're sending to the video feed versus you know just what you hear um, out loud also it also means that you know for instance um, if i'm doing kind of a, a if we're doing like a live stream worship session from home or whatever right now i'll have an amp playing and that amp mix with the voice and the piano sound may not be the mix I'm sending, I am I want to send to the video because I may have the piano a little bit lower so it's not too loud to feedback in a mic or something like that but I want it to be louder in the mix so having it on a separate channel 
meaning it's on main versus, you know, aux will help you allow you to have an individual mix. So I am, you know, I have my board. I'm coming out of the aux uh, output channel with this uh, black and white coiled uh, cable here. This is just an instrument cable like you'd use in a guitar um, or, or piano bass, something like that. And it is going in directly into iRig. Now I'm going to unplug iRig for a second. So iRig right here, it looks like this. It has an eighth inch end on it. And this particular one, iRig 2, is quarter inch on the bottom and then also headphones. And you just plug it, if you have an iPad, right into the headphone jack. If you're using a phone, you will need the uh, Apple converter so that it will work. It'll plug in. Um, but it's like this. It's very simple. It's not much to it. It does have a volume control for how loud the what you're inputting in, the gain, how loud that is going in. To your video device which is helpful so that you don't have to try to control the overall volume from the board all the time you can just control it from here while you're listening to it the headphones are key so if you're going to do video um, separate from your board and especially if you're doing a live service especially when we all get back into church um, and we're doing live services uh, I would have someone else monitor this if they're going to be mixing it at least during music practice or something having these headphones in that I have plugged in so they can monitor the mix actually going to the signal and say hey does that sound too good is it peaking is it too loud how, how does it sound and so this is basically the tool that I'm using it's iRig too. Very good. It's less than 50 bucks in between 30 and 40 usually on Amazon. Um, there are other versions, like I said, of iRig. Um, and there are other versions of audio interfaces. Uh, iRig is not the only one. Uh, I actually use USB audio uh, uh, interfaces like I would use for computers also. Um, I've used those. Uh, those are more bulky um, require more pieces sometimes so it the iRig is just really easy it has velcro on the back that you can just you know velcro it to uh your tripod or whatever for video shoots and then go with it so i have that and the headphones as you see right there um definitely recommend listening before you go live or recording to how it sounds um and then that is going into your video structure now i have my ipad open right now and significantly with this iPad, the reason why I am, I'm going to show you here, is that this is the app I use called Pro uh, Video Plus. You do not have to use this app, but I just want to show you a couple of things to just show you what I'm talking about. You see at the top, there's an audio meter here. This is different than just snapping right here by it. So that's showing you that uh, also you can see right here. So before it was just snapping around here, taking the mic from the iPad. But when I switch it in this particular thing to take the uh, iPad or the mic that's over there. So if I'm tapping right here, it's not as loud, but if I tap back here, I'm getting it from the, uh, the microphone that I have set up from the board. Um, so I just kind of showing you that. Uh, but basically, so the basic signal is I am going from the board out of aux channel to iRig, directly to iRig. Um, and then I am monitoring that uh, feed to make sure it's not too loud, turn it down or whatnot. And then that's going into my device for, for video shoots. Uh, one quick tip um, about some of your apps, whether you're using this pro app or you're using just regular, you know, uh, Facebook Live or whatever you're using to stream or do video. If you want to use the headphones in iRig while the signal's going or even before the signal's going, you want to make sure that your mobile device is not on vibrate, it's not muted, and that your volume's all the way up because that will affect what you can hear. If you're on muted, it will not let you hear out of the iRig. You'll hear nothing. You won't hear the mix coming in. As soon as you unmute that and turn the volume up, you'll hear it. So you want to make sure that's a quick tip. That's something I learned about it. Um, hopefully this helps about the routing. If you have any questions about routing from your sound and, and whatnot, it really a lot a lot more of it will depend on what kind of board you have, what where your 
grabbing the signal from. If you're using digital boards, then you can use more routing functions to get out of different out types of outputs on your board than just that aux out. Like for instance, a Behringer uh, X uh, has XLR outputs, so you may have to just go an XLR to a, uh, which is like a mic cable, to a quarter inch to be able to take your signal to iRig because it's not necessarily, uh, especially if it's a Behringer uh, XR, they don't have necessarily the quarter inch outputs for auxiliary. So you may have to look at what your board is, how the outputs are, and then figure out what cable you need to get it to your uh, streaming. Another thing I would also mention tip wise is if, you know, if you are, if your, you know, setup from your board it is quite a bit of distance, you have a couple options here. Uh, one option is to run just a long cable. You just run a long cable from your board to your, to your camera. Um, when we get back to doing regular services, because right now during the quarantine we're not, but when we do, you probably don't want just a long cable going from your board to, you know, maybe the center of your aisle. You know, you got a spot for your video camera up front or something like that. You, you probably just don't want a cable going all that way. So what you can think about is running a snake or uh, that cable up in the ceiling or something like that. Um, and if you have questions about that type of thing, you can you can uh, comment below and I'll be free. I'll try my best to give you the answer that you need. If not, I'll go ask other people um, that I know that that might have a better solution for you. But I'm just trying to help. And uh, here is just a quick video, uh, maybe a little longer than I wanted to on how to get the signal from your board using iRig to your uh, mobile device for video capture, whether you're shooting a video or you're doing stream. So I hope this helps. Um, let me know in the comments again if you have any questions. Thank you.